Prince Taek Siob strolled past the employees of the TK conglomerate below the building. His eyes found Kong Min Kyu standing with Eun Seyong. They nodded in greeting to Xiaob as they passed each other. Kong Min Kyu and Eun Seyong headed to the office first, while Taek Siob escorted a business partner to their car. His gaze lingered on her, and moments later, he looked back, witnessing the intimate scene between Kong Min Kyu and Eun Seyong with evident discomfort. Eun Seyong draped her arm around Kong Min Kyu's shoulder, leaning in close to him, and exchanged laughs. Returning to his director's office, Taek Siob angrily slammed a stack of documents onto the table, recalling Eun Seyong's pleased expression when looking at him. He cursed under his breath, that scoundrel! How dare he drape his arm around Kong Min Kyu? What is he to her anyway? Just then, Kong Min Kyu entered the room, carrying some documents for him to sign. Naturally, she received his displeasure. Taek Siob interrogated her about her closeness with Eun Seyong, emphasizing his role as the legal counsel for the company's legal department, currently involved in the m a project. He expressed concerns that her intimacy with Eun Seyong would negatively impact the project. Kong Min Kyu apologized, though she found it perplexing why Taek Siob was so upset with her. She explained that they were just close friends, but Taek Siob remained furious, mentioning a previous overnight stay at a hotel with Eun Seyong causing people to suspect they were more than just friends. After uttering this, Taek Siob truly regretted offending her in such a manner. Despite Kong Min Kyu's lack of anger, she simply responded with a yes as usual before leaving. In her heart, she felt a mixture of confusion and hurt. Later that night, Kong Min Kyu lay in bed, about to drift off to sleep when her phone rang, jolting her awake. It was her roommate returning from a business trip abroad. Her journalist friend brought along some wine and light snacks, boasting to Kong Min Kyu about their magazine securing an interview with a famous figure, and the two planned to celebrate. After eating and drinking soju, her close friend unveiled the gift she had bought for Kong Min Kyu, a luxurious silk scarf. She draped it around Kong Min Kyu, who admired herself in the mirror, feeling quite beautiful. Her friend asked about her solemn expression, inquiring about Kong Min Kyu's relationship with that director. Kong Min Kyu denied any romantic feelings towards Taek Siob, yet her eyes betrayed a hint of sadness as she insisted she didn't like him. That night, she lay awake, reflecting on events from a decade ago when they were still interns together. Back then, they were assigned to the same group, the Dream Team interns. Naturally, Taek Siob and Kong Min Kyu were the standouts of the group. Standing together, Kong Min Kyu was captivated by Taek Siob's appearance. He was slightly taller than the others, with a handsome face unlike any other boy she had met. His voice was mesmerizing, and his gestures truly befitting of a gentleman. But she didn't know that he, too, stole glances at her frequently, blushing awkwardly when caught. They had lunch together in the cafeteria, sitting across from each other. Taek Siob picked out some mushrooms from his food. She asked if he was allergic to them, to which he replied affirmatively, then inquired if she had any allergies and knew how it felt to be allergic? However, she wasn't allergic to the food and enjoyed a delicious piece of sushi. She encouraged him to try some fish, and he genuinely found it tasty, admitting so. Kong Min Kyu looked at him, amused, cheering him on like an innocent child. At that time, Kong Min Kyu was choreographing a group dance for the company's year-end party. She worked diligently and led the team in executing the dance routine. She assigned a guy to lift a girl standing in the middle of the dance group, choosing a rather muscular young man. This made Taek Siob somewhat jealous. He claimed he was also very strong and took on the task. However, shortly after, Taek Siob nearly lost his temper when he found out that the girl who would be dancing with him at the center was someone else chosen by Kong Min Kyu. He looked at her with annoyance and coldness, leaving her puzzled. They were folding paper airplanes together, Taek Siob and Kong Min Kyu on the same team. Their performance would be judged based on the number and distance the paper airplanes could fly. Taek Siob asked her which color she preferred for the folded paper, but Kong Min Kyu was more concerned about the weight and size of the paper. Taek Siob asked if she had folded them before, 
to which Kong Min-Q admitted she hadn't folded them seriously before and began calculating the metrics to create a perfect paper airplane. Taek Siob demonstrated his professional paper folding skills, boasting about his achievements in folding paper airplanes, which impressed Kong Min-Q without knowing that Taek Siob had only folded paper airplanes as a child and was praised by his family. He joked about it, but she always took things seriously. Kong Min-Q admired Taek Siob's folding skills as he named various types of airplanes. But he became frustrated when he learned that she was quite knowledgeable about aerodynamics. Taek Siob felt insecure about his knowledge compared to Kong Min-Q, who indeed surpassed him by a large margin. Taek Siob went crazy because of Kong min yus meticulous calculations, asking her why she needed to do so. Kong Min-Q explained that she takes her work seriously, and winning means she gets a valuable prize, a phone, which is important to her. Taek Siob was surprised, as it was just an old phone. As Taek Siob carefully folded papers, Kong Min-Q sat beside him, praising him for being smart and polite. The way she instilled confidence in others made Taek Siob happy. He felt shy for the first time in front of a girl's clear eyes. However, he felt disappointed because it seemed like her beautiful eyes were just for him, she didn't seem to pay attention to him. On the day of the year-end company party, the girl will dance along with Taek Siob in the center of the group with leg pain, and the only person who belongs to every movement of the dance is Kong Min-Q. She was always prepared for any situation so she memorized it. Taek Siob was surprised and overjoyed by this news, he admired her thoughtful preparation, Kong Min-Q was so talented. When Kong Min-Q asks him if he needs to change her movements more simply because she is taller than the girl she replaced? Naturally, Taek Siob expects nothing more, he says he can do it, it is easy for him. The performance began, he held her in the middle, feeling proud and ecstatic. The young man in his twenties touched a girl for the first time, feeling strangely lightheaded. He was about 1.7 meters tall, and probably weighed a little. But when he lifted her up with his hands, he was amazed, she was much smaller than he thought, her small waist in his hands, her beautiful smiley face on his face, and her breasts, so soft and large, were making contact with a few of his fingers. He woke up in the middle of the night, happy with the image of her in his arms. He took a warm shower to wash away his unhealthy thoughts. The next day, he arrived at the office, playing classical music and contemplating his perfection. However, he couldn't stop thinking about Kong Min Yu, despite the other beautiful girls who often tried to seduce him. He calmed down, realizing that his feelings were normal for a young man like him. Content with this reasoning, he relaxed in his chair, feeling perfect. But his happiness didn't last long. As he smiled to himself, the familiar sound of knocking startled him, and he fell to the ground. Kong Min Q entered the room, taking off her black coat, revealing a thin shirt underneath, shaking her hair slightly, looking charming. Taek Siob got annoyed. He had just calmed down for less than three minutes, and she had already distracted him. He angrily asked why she was dressed like that. Kong Min Q explained that the room's heater was too hot, so she felt uncomfortable and had to take off her coat. Taek Siob told her to turn off the heater and put her coat back on. Their work was not going smoothly due to the scandals involving Taek Siob's father in the Amanda project. Taek Siob was often more irritable. While Kong Min Q adjusted the air conditioner temperature, she thought about the Sheba dog sitting quietly on the director's chair, sighing, while Taek Siob kept ordering her to leave his office. Their workdays passed in exhaustion. During dinner at a humble restaurant, Eun Se-young, Kong Min-Q, and their roommate ate together. Kong Min-Q recounted Taek Siob's unusual outburst to her friends, without any apparent reason. Both friends were surprised by his attitude. Kong Min-Q was so irritated that she said she wanted to hit him. It was the first time she had shown such an attitude. They sympathized and shared the fatigue with Kong min Yu. Eun Se-young seriously suggested Kong Min-Q change her job, saying she had enough ability to become a director after 10 years of perfect dedication. As a lawyer, Eun Se-young said she would help Kong Min-Q solve any personnel problems if she encountered them. Eun Se-young persisted in her opinion, persuading her that the scandals of the conglomerate in the Amida project, 
and the signs of fraud at accounting were clear. But Kong Min Kyu denied that responsibility belonged to Xiaob, but rather to Tae Xiaob's father. The argument between Un Seyong quickly ended when Kong Min Kyu firmly defended Xiaob. That night, Kong Min Kyu received a message from Xiaob saying she didn't need to pick him up at his house anymore. She took the subway to the company and saw a group of workers protesting in front of the building. They were protesting for their rights and accusing the TK Corporation of firing many workers in the Amanda project. Media reports on this issue put pressure on TK. Kong Min Kyu gently entered the room where Tae Xiaob was silently standing, looking out the window, coldly saying, Explain. Kong Min Kyu said softly, to avoid firing many workers during the Amida project acquisition, the property purchase contract has been replaced for the merger. This made Tae Xiaob truly angry. He expressed his disappointment that Kong Min Kyu didn't report this during the project implementation. But Kong Min Kyu had no choice, this decision was made by the corporation. She explained that the project's income was insignificant compared to the entire company's revenue, and because the project was small in scale, according to company regulations, she didn't need to report it to him. Taek Siob turned away, ran his hands through his hair, and laughed. Kong Min Yu, you always know everything before me, don't you? Song Bok Jae will promote employees like you, right? Are you working as my assistant to climb higher in position? Or is it because of your younger brothers? He advanced quickly towards her, reaching out to her face, observing. His eyes were filled with bitterness as he pulled a strand of hair aside to get a better look at her. Kong Min Kyu tried to explain what had just happened, but Tae Xiaob seemed indifferent. He laughed bitterly, saying he knew all about how TK Corporation sponsored her two younger brothers for training and competitions, using that as leverage against her while working here. He also knew she was Song Bok Jae's secret weapon for handling incidents. She was too outstanding to not be promoted within the company. He was so sad that tears threatened to fall. Placing both hands on her shoulders, he said he had dedicated many years to this company like her and understood it too well. He was here to clean up the mess his father had left behind. Taek Siob held her hand, his face a mix of anger and anguish. He had never complained to anyone about the burdens he bore, the pressure and expectations placed on him, including the responsibility for his father's mistakes. In front of her, he could let his emotions loose. Taek Sia pulled her hand towards him, his desperation and exhaustion making him lose his composure. He was angry with Kong Min Yu. In fact, both of them understood that this task was assigned to Kong Min Kyu just to relieve pressure from Taek Sia and the responsibilities would eventually fall on her. Kong Min Kyu withdrew her hand from his grip, and Taek Siob tried to hold on to his remaining sanity, stepping back, wiping away the tears that had fallen. Kong Min Yu, please transfer to another department. I won't cause you any trouble. Please disappear from my sight, he said slowly. Taek Siob didn't want her to see him so vulnerable, in front of her, he always turned into a weakling. Anger and frustration were acceptable to her, but asking her to leave was not. Kong Min Kyu started to get angry, shifting from fear to sadness, then to anger. She shouted, Director Taek Siob, please wake up. Now is the time to solve those problems instead of sitting here and speaking weak words. Everyone knows that Director Taek Siob has dedicated 10 years to this conglomerate which is why you still hold your director position in TK Corporation even though your father caused those troubles. And I am honored to work for you. So are you easily giving up all the efforts you've put in so far? Kong Min Kyu's voice gradually softened as she gently and seriously advised him. When Kong Min Kyu got angry, Taek Siob felt scared to the point of forgetting his own anger, gradually calming down. He smiled, this is the Kong Min Yu I know, TK's secret weapon. She sat down beside him on the floor, patting his shoulder in encouragement. You just need to give the orders, she reassured him. Her gentle eyes at that moment put him at ease, and he said, just do as you wish. He always believed in her capabilities and her sincerity. They continued to work together, tackling the current challenges side by side. Taek Siob's predecessor, his father, had been involved in manipulating project prices to commit securities fraud, 
as well as engaging in illegal business mergers and accounting fraud. The scandals, which were reported in the media, put immense pressure on Taik Siab. He and his colleagues worked overtime day and night for many days thereafter. Meetings and negotiations took place, and Taik Siab helped stabilize the company bit by bit. And of course, the beautiful lady beside him also contributed to this. She had worked hard alongside him for the past few months, providing the smartest solutions to problems. Taik Siab sat next to her, listening to her reports. Things were almost better now. Both of them looked exhausted. Taik Siab rested his hand on the armrest, listening to her, and asked why she chose to work at TK Corporation. She said it was because they offered the highest salary in the industry. Taik Siab regretted that she wasn't in a leadership position with such talent. He turned to look at her, asking why she didn't pursue a master's degree or receive any scholarships and instead chose to work here. And her answers always surprised him. She candidly and confidently recounted how she had always excelled since childhood. She had mastered all the knowledge in her elementary school textbooks and fell into a state of boredom and disinterest in studying, worrying her family. She excelled at everything else and had no trouble with anything. But her younger brothers couldn't do anything other than play sports. So she chose to forego pursuing a master's degree and went to work just for her siblings. And it was a voluntary choice that made her happy, she just wanted a normal and happy life. Taik Siab sighed, looking at her with admiration, that's cool, he sincerely said that he had wanted to become a great person as his family wished, but life wasn't like a dream. Kong Min Kyu turned back to him with a smile, a great director, indeed, she said with a cheerful face, as if speaking to a child, making Taik Siab feel embarrassed, as if being teased. Kong Min Kyu had once thought that Taik Siab was just like a beautiful flower in Baek Song Jae's garden, proud and full of life, but gradually she understood that he was just an ordinary person who had to constantly strive to maintain his position. He was truly hardworking and tired. They finished their work. Taik Siab woke up after dozing off on his desk, it was already 1 a.m. He wasn't the only one working overtime. Kung Min Kyu was also dozing off on the sofa over there. Taik Siab approaches, intending to wake her up, but he bends down and looks at her for a moment. She was really tired of sleeping, her pretty face, her neck and collarbones delicate, her jacket slightly off. Taik Siab stared at her chest, still perfect and shook him like that. He instinctively licked his lips, his heart rate soaring. He hurried to the bathroom to wash his face and clear his mind from some impure thoughts. The cold water helped him get rid of some of the brothers in his little army after a few minutes. Taik Siab muttered to himself in the bathroom, I'm such a fool.